Welcome to all who have gathered here at St. Michael's to celebrate the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please stand as you are able. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you call us to be part of a loving community. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you have chosen us to be who we are with you and with the Father. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you send us to preach the gospel to all nations. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. you 
Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Amos. Amaziah, priest of Bethel, said to Amos, Off with you, visionary, flee to the land of Judah. There, Earn your bread by prophesying, but never again prophesy in Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary and a royal temple. Amos answered Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor have I belonged to a company of prophets. I was a shepherd and a dresser of sycamores. The Lord took me from following the flock and said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before him. In love, he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ, in accord with the favor of his will, for the praise of the glory of his grace that he granted us in the beloved. In him, we have redemption by his blood, the forgiveness of transgressions in accord with the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. In all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will in accord with his favor that he set forth in him as a plan for the fullness of times to sum up all things in Christ, in heaven and on earth. In him, we were also chosen, destined in accord with the purpose of the one who accomplishes all things according to the intention of his will, so that we might exist for the praise of his glory, we who first hoped in Christ. In him, you also, who have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him, were sealed with the promise of Holy Spirit, with the first installment of your inheritance toward redemption as God's possession, to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to mark Lord, you, Lord. jesus summoned the 12 and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits he instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick no food no sack no money in their belts they were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. The twelve drove out many demons, and they anointed with oil many who were sick, and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You heard that joke, didn't you? That not everything that was said in biblical times made it into the scriptures. How at the Last Supper Jesus said, all right, 
everybody who wants to be in the picture get on this side of the table. <laughs> in our first reading today, we're introduced to Amos, a prophet chosen by God and being sent on a mission. In our second word, or excuse me, in our second reading, we hear of how through the mission and ministry of Jesus, we have all been chosen by God. And finally, we hear Jesus sending out his disciples two by two, chosen and sent. What does that mean? Being chosen or being invited to sit on this side of the table is a gift from God. When we first accepted the faith, and for most of us that was done by our parents at our baptism, you and I had little to do with it. Being chosen by God is pure gift. If you are sitting in this church, if you have been baptized, tag, you're it. You get to be in the picture. When we profess faith in God and his son Jesus, boom, you are chosen. That is a very good thing. What a gift. Being chosen is a very good place to be. Listen to this. God has blessed us in Christ, from our second reading, with every spiritual blessing in the heavens as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before him. In love, he destined us for adoption to be, excuse me, to himself through Jesus Christ. In him, we have redemption by his blood, the forgiveness of transgressions in accordance with the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. It is very good to be chosen, to be in the picture. If we agree that we are chosen, we are in the picture. We have been invited to sit on this side of the table, and it is very good. There has to be more. Let's take a look into the readings for today. In the first reading, we learn of Amos, chosen by God and sent to prophesy. What does it mean to be a prophet? Some think being a prophet means to foretell the future, but a better definition of a prophet is one who speaks for God, and that a true prophet often makes the listener feel challenged or uncomfortable in how he or she practices the faith. When reading the stories of the Old Testament prophets, excuse me, when we read the stories of the Old Testament prophets, we quickly see how this is most often meant a calling of others to repentance. Certainly there are prophetic announcements of God's love and tender care as well, but the call to repentance was primary. To be a prophet of God is to be a God's voice to others, to speak what God wants others to hear. Amos was definitely a prophet of God who was sent to share a message of repentance that was very challenging for the people of Israel to hear. Moving to our gospel reading, it helps to remember that Jesus' very first words after his baptism by John the Baptist was a call to repentance. He wants people to change their ways. Another way of saying this, he wants everyone to get better at being what God intended them to be. So he calls all to repent, which means to change for the better. In our gospel message today, Jesus sends out his disciples two by two. Scripture doesn't specifically tell us what he wanted them to do when he sent them. But after lots of advice from Jesus to his disciples about what not to bring on the journey, it comes as no surprise as they went off and preached a message of repentance, change, become better. Today's scripture is about recognizing that we, like Amos and the disciples, are chosen by God and sent. We have been invited to come around to this side of the table, and we cannot just sit there in the picture forever. We have purpose. We need to go out and be God's voice, to prophesy to the world. We need to tell the world of God's great love for everyone. We need to be willing to invite others to become all that God has created them to be. This is not easy to do. I often hear stories of Catholics being irritated by someone knocking on their door and preaching to them. Well, I also know that many of us 
are either very uncomfortable or don't feel qualified to go out and preach the good news. So let me give us some suggestions. One, as attributed to St. Francis of Assisi, preach the gospel always and when necessary, use words. It doesn't mean words are never necessary. Sometimes words are critical in sharing the gospel. But it also says that our actions and our lifestyle can give powerful witness to the gospel of Jesus. Another similar quote by a man named William J. Toms says, Be careful how you live your life. You may be the only Bible some people ever read. And finally, when we are good and ready to preach the gospel and call others to repent, let's start with ourselves. Before we go knocking on neighbors' doors or preaching to someone in our family or coworkers, let us take a good, hard look in the mirror and bring the gospel message of the great love of God and that call to repentance into our own hearts. Let's take some time and read and reread the gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Let us read the stories of the prophets of the Old Testament and hear them calling not only the people of Israel, but even you and me today to repentance. Let us ask Jesus to live in our hearts and heartily thank God for choosing us to get on this side of the table and learn what it means to be in the picture. Together we profess our faith. I believe believe in one God, God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence, we turn to our Heavenly Father, offering our prayers and petitions. That the God of unity might bring his church together in faith, hope, and love as a witness to the gospel, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the God of peace might inspire us to work for peace and religious freedom rooted in truth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That the God of creation might bless our land with adequate rain, safety from storm, and a bountiful harvest to feed the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That the God of light might teach all persons true reverence for human life and help us reflect his love in the service of others who suffer, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That the God of hope might bring Ali May Lang, for whom this Mass is offered, and Norman Rugemer, who passed away recently, and all those who have died into the joys of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. 
that the God of love might hear now our intentions offered in silent prayer. For all of these needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Please join us in praying for our children and youth. Father, help us as we pray for the youth of our parishes. Renew in them a fervor and a desire to always be with you. Continue to awaken our youth in the imaginable love that you have for them. These youth are so precious to you and to us. We thank you always for your love, mercy, and protection. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. And may the Lord accept sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all in his holy church. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that, when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead. We hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service 
that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, 
with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Please offer one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only 
will say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join us for the summer pro-life rally this Sunday from 1 to 3 p.m. at Planned Parenthood in St. Cloud to pray the Rosary and Divine Mercy Chaplet to aid in the closure of this Planned Parenthood and all abortion facilities in the world. We'll pray at 1 p.m. and have a potluck social at 2 p.m. at St. Augustine's Cafeteria. Parking is available on Wilson Avenue and St. Augustine's Church parking lot. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God always keep every adversity far from you, and in his kindness pour out upon you the gifts of his blessing. Amen. Amen. May God keep your hearts attentive to his words, that they may be filled with everlasting gladness. Amen. Amen. And so may you always understand what is good and right, and be found ever hastening along in the path of God's commands, made co-heirs with the citizens of heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, proclaiming the gospel with your lives. Thanks be to God. I invite you to kneel and join in our prayer to St. Michael. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Saint, Saint Michael, Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. In your protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil, may God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.